Well, first of all, it's a great honor for me to be here representing you know, a uh, somewhat underrepresented community, uh, which is the scientists and also the engineers who builds those uh, super AI machines. In fact, in my backyard, I have uh, two large language models being trained, and also we are training the models for biology and so forth. Uh, I've been carefully hearing, you know, listening to you know, the arguments from both sides. Uh, I hear a lot of emotions, a lot of uh, passions, anger and the fear and the many things. But to be honest, I didn't hear too many facts. And also I heard a lot of uh, uh, jumping reasoning you know, uh, from A to B without the stepping stones in the between. I give you a few examples, okay? One example is that, oh, ChatGPT 3 is so powerful, it generates articles and so forth. It does planning uh, you know, in some way, two or three steps correctly. And then the next is that uh, what about it start to plan infinitely well and also start to plan against us? Uh, well, technically there is a feasibility issue to be answered. And also it's like, hey, I'm riding a bicycle or I'm uh, driving a car. I can drive faster and faster and faster by speaking of gas and therefore the car will fly and then will take me to the moon and to the Mars and so forth, right? There is a uh, uh, ignorance on the paradigm shift sometimes needed to even you know, make continuous progress. And AI is no exception of that, okay? AI can take us to a certain point, but not to a infinity like a godlike GPT. In fact, that's the first time I heard that there is a godlike machine you know, uh, through the current path of AI developments. Give me a second, because I'm short of time. I will give you some time to answer questions after that. Uh, one of the issues that uh, I want to uh, point out is that what we have been talking about so far most likely is an abstract risk and abstract damage and harm. In spite of the fact that there are many technologies which have been producing demonstrated harms. I give you a few examples, right? We all see you know, the COVID. Uh, or maybe other form of virus, you know, uh, either uh, engineered, you know, or leaked from uh, captured animals, you know, into the world. Uh, that's a real risk. And do we say biology therefore pose a excessive risk to mankind? Likewise, I can give you examples about, uh, you know, uh, chemical weapons. You know, even 100 years ago, it produces, you know, a, uh, such a human loss in the order of tens of thousands, nuclear bomb not to speak, right? So AI has been given the honor to be singled out as the only branded excessive risk. And I need to ask why? Because uh, it is actually not yet based on a demonstrated harm of that magnitude. And I scratch my head to find the reason why this is uh, you know, uh, receiving such a disproportional attention given the relatively you know, a uh, modest and uh, very often time controllable risk that we experience so far. I want to emphasize controllable. Remember, biology, chemistry, and the physics, and the many science, they actually happen in the physical world. Their experiments happens in the lab or in the field, and uh, they actually do impose a material risk when something goes wrong. At least, all the AI productivity and also you know, the, uh, the inventions is a digital device. It is sitting in the computer. If it comes to kill you, it needs someone to shoot a gun because uh, the AI itself does not have uh, that physical vehicle to even execute that harm. Therefore, something else is it, needed. Therefore, you, know, uh, you can say that uh, AI could be you know, a, uh, a conspiring kind of a partner or a tool, but there is another part in this whole game that we didn't even bring it out. And in most of these cases, it's the human being. I heard a brilliant statement just now that uh, nobody is threat the existence of a human being than human being himself. I totally agree that because uh, even the creation of the AI for good and bad is actually by and large in the mankind. And also don't forget that Comparing to many of the tools that we're using now, mechanical tools, biological tools, and other things, AI 
products and the functions has probably the most amount of checking points that you actually can use, okay, including shut down the machines and computers. But there are many other ways to patch the code, to change the data, to rewrite the loss function. There are many, many technical and also you know, uh, policy and also regulatory tools to contain AI better than many other existing products. And lastly, I also want to point out one thing that is often ignored. What is AI? In fact, uh, the AI I hear today is very, very different from the AI I work on at my, in my occupation every day, okay? What I hear here is that uh, AI becomes, the God becomes everything, okay? It is on the one hand a science, and then a technology, and then a product, and then maybe the people who produce that. You cannot basically blanketly you know, uh, label so many things with just one word and call it a risk because uh, that is leading to things that is completely actionable or inactionable, right? So this is actually uh, the flaw of uh, the argument that I hear that I don't even see a tangible and a legitimate subject that I can act against. And then the risk definition, I also hear the shifting uh, characterizations of that starting from uh, something as big as a god and then down to something that is uh, uh, becoming, okay, suppressing human creativity also can be branded as a excessive risk. Or then it goes down as small as uh, causing someone to lose jobs and so forth. So this is not the way we characterize a fundamental excessive risk. I think a excessive risk should probably have the following few characters, like we describe, for example, a natural disaster, say a asteroid hitting the Earth or a super volcano extract. There has, been to, there has to be something unstoppable and then if it is a man-made or an artificial thing, then it should also come with the intent, the ability, and also the uncontrollability. And I find AI not qualified for either of that. Intent, we heard the argument already. Intent is not coming out of blue, right? It is a very, very personal and also contextualized project or object you know, that is uh, uh, very, very typical to human. But uh, for a machine, you call them an accident when something goes wrong, rather than you call them, you know, intent to kill you, right? So how to program the intent into an AI system right now is unknown. And uh, technically, I don't find there is a, a kind of a good rationale to justify or to conclude that AI machine in the future will have that, because AI requires data, to train, to learn, and then to extrapolate. It is a statistical interpretation and also some extrapolation. And from the data, it doesn't tell you basically to have open questions to be asked. I heard one great argument about uh, the product manager and the, the engineer relationship. It's not about, uh, hey, I want to have product A, therefore someone will go and input. It takes through a lot of uh, understanding and the cross work to understand exact intent and also to come up with a solution, not alone to come up with the intent itself. Right. Ability, I just mentioned that. There is a huge technical gap from now to the future to even making modest progress in our AI capability. And thirdly, unstoppability, I just mentioned, checking points in AI machines exist in many places. After all, it is a software product. Very often time, we call AI, what is AI? AI is a method where AI is an idea. AI is most likely something that doesn't work. And when it worked, it's called a product. You call it a car, you call it uh, you know, a TikTok app or something. Once you have a product in your hand, it is actually offering you all the ways of regulating, of controlling, and of managing. Therefore, I could not draw the dots you know, to connect AI Toward direct towards a excessive risk. And I want to conclude by saying that this type of argument and narrative is actually even societally not very helpful because it is not really even promoting, okay, the very spirit of a rational conversation and discussion about the realizability, about the controllability, and also about the, the value and the harm, you know, of, uh, you know, uh, a technology or a product Diff, you know, similarly to many other inventions we have. Right. 
the kind of uh, existential risk doesn't, is not actually new you know, uh, in human civilization. Uh, if uh, well, Oxford University was created uh, when? It was uh, during the Middle Evil Age, uh, after basically you know, uh, a breakthrough made by printing press where books are made available you know, to every citizen. At, at that time, the church was actually having the similar type of fear like many people right now. Right. They said, oh, average people all get their book of Bible they can read and interpret by themselves. What if the book printed it wrong? Or what if they don't understand what it's saying? The, the world will collapse. Right? But what we actually see is the age of enlightenment. People have their own book. They can use the book to do harmful things, but they also can use them to do a lot of things. But most importantly, they can use them to do thinking. Right? And also, right now, what I see, the AI is giving us not just one book, but the entire universe of libraries and all knowledge being created. Of course, there are a lot of risks in giving people that kind of power. But uh, I would uh, like to predict that this will lead to a positive movement at the same scale of Renaissance. I call them the age of uh, empowerment instead of uh, enlightenment, because uh, you can now worry about using these tools, what kind of problems you want to solve, rather than focusing on how to solve it in many of the technical cases. We never, for example, experience uh, extinction because some job is lost. In fact, more are created, right? And I think the argument itself should also justify itself by presenting the value and also the cost it produces in the community. Everything has a risk, right? So a risk isn't uh, equivalent to you know, uh, the magnitude of uh, existential risk. And also the risk is not necessarily from that subject AI itself. I, I just mentioned that AI is a very blanket term right now, unfortunately confounded and overloaded with many, many things. And what is behind that is actually usually a human party, you know, or some kind of other intent that is uh, causing many of the consequences, no different from uh, other tools being abused. So I cannot basically be convinced or really uh, stand the accusation that uh, I am a terminator, I'm creating something that is going to be destroying civilization and extinction in the human, uh, human being in the, in the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>